Let's take a look at error polymorphism today. And for my example program, I'm converting lists of tokens, such as yes, no, yes, into binary representation, such as 101. But if I have a bad token like maybe, then I can't do the conversion. I'm managing this with exception handling, in particular, a checked exception here in Java. And then I have this higher order function map join that maps the things that come in into some kind of string and then joins them together. And I'm trying to pretend that I have a custom function type that allows for generic exceptions. My problem here is that I'm using the built-in stream feature of Java and here this map function doesn't allow for any kind of checked exceptions on it. So I have to catch any exception I receive and throw a runtime exception. So because of that, any exception that gets thrown, including the one I want to support throwing, I have to wrap in a runtime exception. And back up here in my binarize that changes yes to one and no to zero, I can catch runtime exceptions. And if the cause was a bad token, I can unwrap that and send that out. Now this is super unfortunate. And it turns out Java doesn't actually have to be this way because we can do this better. I can't catch and throw generic types because they're erased at runtime, but I can just let them pass through if I've declared that I throw them. And it can properly infer that generic exception type for pass through purposes. So if I just manually do this, instead of using the stream features that are built into Java, then I get exception polymorphism just fine. Let's binarize better. And it still works as before. Of course, an alternative to this is the C-sharp way of saying we don't have checked exceptions. So I can make a custom exception type, throw it whenever I want to, and go right through the link map function with no issues at all, and just catch it if I want to. And acts just like in Java. Of course, it's sometimes nice to know statically that certain kinds of errors can happen. And one fun language to look at for this is Coca that has arbitrary effect polymorphism of which exceptions are one case. And in this case, I'm using the built-in exception mechanism. I'm checking the exception string here. And hey, this is Tom from the future. And I got some help from Coca people that said that I don't actually have to rely on the text in there, but I can actually extend the exception info because it's an open type. And so because of that, I can provide my own bad token info and match on that, which is nicer than checking a string, obviously. I didn't get that done in time for the main recording, so back to what I had earlier. So here for the binarize function, I'm claiming it has an explicit exn or exception effect, but map join that maps things and then joins them is polymorphic in the exceptions. This e here could be anything. It's like the generic exception of Java. But this E is not just for exceptions, it's for any kind of effect. For example, in order to print anything out, we have to have a console effect, such as what I have here in my main. Let's run this. And note that if I get rid of the polymorphism here, I now have an error because the exception effect can't be passed along through map join. And we can see here that it infers that exception effect. Now I could be silly and print other things in here as well, which is fine by map join, but we'd also have to allow for console effect and binarize. So here I'm having again explicit effects, and here those effects are just being inferred. I can also just ask for inferred effects, although in this case it's having those effects explicitly as opposed to polymorphically. Coca also has built-in value-based error forwarding in addition to exception effects, but to look closer at that, let's go to a language that emphasizes errors as values. And in this case, we're going to look at Rust with its result enum. It can either be successfully a string for binarize, or as an error, it could be a bad token. Now, I can make this a more flexible kind of error, but for the purpose of this program, the only kind of error I'm going to bother getting is a bad token. And while we saw that Java can make exceptions generic as long as they're just passed through, and Coca can make arbitrary polymorphic effects, Rust doesn't really need to do either because ordinary generics automatically handle error types as well because they're just values. So down here in map join, I have to have a lot of type variables, but here my result type 
is just an ordinary type, and E for error is also just an ordinary type, and I can just make it pass through. And it can infer that the only kind of error I'm giving here is bad token, so E also has to be bad token. Let's run this. And it compiled fast because Rust does a good job of handling caching of previous compiled results. But we see here it worked just fine. And trifold also has generics for the possible error type. So the errors are polymorphic naturally just through ordinary generics in Rust. And as another detour from Tom in the future, I realized I failed to cover another exploration I wanted to do, which is instead of returning an explicit result, just return any old kind of type. And that type can still be a result type with possible errors. But because this function is now agnostic to whether it's getting a result type or not, it can't do things like early exit, nor extract out the values from the non-error cases. The body of this function is unchanged, but in this case, the results I get are very different. So it might depend on what you're trying to achieve, whether this kind of result agnostic flexibility is useful to you. Anyway, let's go back to the original recording. But before we're done, let's take a look also at Zig, which famously has compile time execution, and we can use comp time to make polymorphic errors here as well. Now, note that functional programming is not really common in Zig. It's much more about imperative, but we can do functional if we want to within the constraints of the language. So here I'm looping on entries as for the other languages. If it's successful, I print it out. Otherwise, if I get a bad token error specifically, I'm gonna print that and forward any other errors out of main. In this case, I know specifically that's just out of memory error. Here I've passed in my allocator into binarize. And here's my function that changes yes to one, no to zero, and otherwise gives an error. And I can use whatever kind of error types I want for this function. And a map join knows how to allow just those types or out of memory as errors out of my binarize function. And how does it do that? Well, with error polymorphism via comp time. I call that function for each of the items and I just build up a result as before, but this try can forward specifically anything that my function can forward or also out of memory error. Let's see briefly how this can work and I'm not promising I'm doing this in the best way possible. Getting a return type from some function type is pretty easy, but here's how I've composed the extra error types with the built-in error types of my map join function. And the built-in was out of memory and the extra came from bad token from my mapping function. So for whatever extra we have, we can get out the error set if there is one. We can also get out any errors for the built-in main return type and get that return type value as well, union those error sets and build a combo return type, which means the possible error set for map join depends on the error set of func as well as the out of memory that I've made explicit here. Let's prove it works. And there we go, just as for the previous languages. And this is just terminal junk. There's the command I ran. Anyway, this looks at a few different languages and how you can do error polymorphism in them. I hope this has been fun. And if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye y'all.